already feel the heat of the challenge of Generation Z and uh, the millennials who are not willing to listen to long training sessions, PowerPoints, who don't end and other things. And how do you react to that? How, how can you get them into the movie? So, Richard, you, do you want to start? <laughs> It's hard when you when you think you are when you're when you're leading a group that's responsible for a program supporting forty thousand uh, employees. Of course, it's hard to meet every employee where they want to be in terms of learning. I think what we try and do instead is is really make sure we consult with learning experts and stay ahead of best practice in teaching and in learning. And what we found uh, most helpful for everyone, really. Uh, no matter how old you are, what your generation is, is scenario-based training will always be a more effective than long PowerPoints explaining rules and laws. So yeah. we have a program where we try and um, establish a scenario and live, and then we uh, pose the question and the predicament, and we invite our colleagues to express their view of what they think should happen what they should do in a particular situation. And then the team guides uh, the participants to the right answer. They didn't come up with the right answer in the first place. And so there you have a very interactive approach. And I think uh, millennials know really what they're looking for. They don't want to be lectured to, uh, they don't want to become uh, lawyers or experts in industry regulation. They really want to understand what they need to do. The great thing about this generation though, a number of the speakers have touched on this, is they have high expectations for the company and its ethical decision making. And as a result of that, in a way, they're easier to reach because they're already willing and able to accept the message that um, what they do, what we do uh, as leaders and as individuals matters a lot uh, to the reputation of the company. And if it's ever going to take an ENC program and have it be seen as important as ESG, as important as all the other um, key uh, um, challenges and opportunities that come with the broader corporate purpose and, and the stakeholder interest that we see today. The company has to have a strong ethics and compliance environment and culture. So I find they're very, very able, willing, and want to participate as so long as we reach them in a way that I think actually works for all of our employees. Really? My side, um, Matthias, if I if I may, um, we do see that uh, uh, the young generations are looking for uh, innovative ways of of doing everything. So and uh, they need to they need us to go direct to the to the point and uh, to to do this specific um, information that they need to know. Uh, and uh, let me add that uh, we also see, and it's not uh, something new, that uh, they are more interested in uh, something sustainable. They are looking at the reputation of the companies uh, while they are yeah, planning their path, uh, pathways in, in their careers. So, uh, we have to to look at them. They will be running companies uh, in the near future, so um, we need to to be innovative and uh, yeah, adapt ourselves to 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 that next generations. Okay, yeah, that looks good. Or oh, at, at least what I can listen <laughs> sounds good. Um, difficult, I think, in, in practice, isn't it? But yeah. now, yeah. now we have a, a question, which is not a question, or it's at least not put as a question, but is somebody asking for suggestions? Um, somebody who has to prepare a training for anti-money money laundering, yeah, which is one of the most interesting, entertaining, and funny things on earth. And uh, she's asking, <laughs> How to be creative on that? Any suggestions? <laughs> well, Richard? <laughs> From my side? No. 
No, uh, I think that um, it's, uh, yeah, I agree. It's a, a boring topic um, and uh, based on laws and regulations. So I think that the most creative thing that I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about is um, bringing cases um, uh, 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 to be very practice uh, and uh, be uh, like brief and uh, go direct uh, to the point again, uh, not yeah, uh, explaining line by line the law, but yeah, um, transforming the requirements in, in a storytelling, right? That this is a, a very fashion a way of uh, training people. So through storytelling, uh, it's, uh, I think it's a, a better way of explaining boring laws. And I'm, yeah, I'm not a lawyer, of course, right? <laughs> so. uh, the only thing I would add is, this is a great example, obviously depending on the company and its business and its risk profile. This is a great example of an area that I think warrants very targeted training. And I think, uh, so for example, the finance department or the legal department uh, on this issue need to be trained. And they, they should accept that there will be some boring parts of that training. <laughs> Not the kind of training in most organizations, at least in the consumer or retail area where you would expect every employee to really have a lot of familiar with uh, anti-money laundering. And I think one of the mistakes that compliance program makes is they treat every employee as the same kind of employee. And yeah. so it's equally mm -hmm. important, I think, for the effectiveness of the program and whether we say to be successful or to avoid failures, in the end, it doesn't matter. We've got to make sure that the employees that have special roles where they touch on key internal controls like anti-money laundering really understand what they need to do their jobs and to be effective and to follow company policy. That's very different from some other areas that I think actually launched the most global compliance programs like anti-corruption or data privacy, where really everyone needs to know something about that. The, the, the levels might vary of how much you need to know, but most employees really need to know the basics of both of those areas. And yeah. That's not true for every risk area. And I think we need to be careful about overwhelming employees and making sure that we're giving them really what they need to know to be successful in their roles and nothing, nothing else. Okay. Now, Coming in the last question, considering that human behavior is one of the principal causes for compliance programs failings, how important do you think is it to talk about the potential of human corruption in training sessions? Hmm. So I have my style that uh, I, <laughs> I, I like to start uh, uh, from the consequences uh, to have uh, corrective, corruptive, uh, corruptive, sorry, behaviors and the consequences, not only for the company, but only, and also, but also for them. So, um, this is one thing. The other thing that uh, I like, but uh, to be honest, I didn't start is uh, working uh, in about incentive instead of sanctions. Um, this is something that uh, it would be <coughs> really useful, uh, but um, I don't have experience with that. Um, so yeah. It's, it's not easy because uh, you have to influence them somehow. And uh, we are not psychologists, right? So we, uh, we need to be creative, be supported, uh, maybe sometimes uh, by other areas uh, to think about that uh, uh, behavioral compliance. I believe there's a place for, for it, and I know uh, we certainly do have um, references in our presentations about fines and penalties, and, and I think on some level you need that. However, uh, I think it's a little bit uh, old-fashioned to overemphasize yeah. 
<laughs> penalties and investigations and all these terrible things that could happen. I think if you just listen to today's discussion, it's going to be much more effective, more powerful, more memorable if it's a more positive uh, message of if you want your company to have a strong corporate purpose and to really serve all of its stakeholders properly, your customers, um, your vendors, your third parties, the communities in which we live, if you really want a company like that, you need to follow the rules and hear the rules. So it's a more positive, I think more in the moment message to say, we all we think, but here's how to do it. And here's how the ANC program can affect whether or not this company truly stands for more than just the bottom line. And that's really, I think, where business is going. I mean, Allison started that discussion earlier today, but to then just have training that, that hammers people <laughs> with all that's so wrong, uh, I don't think is really the message from the day. Okay, thank you so much to both of you. I think your, your insights, your practical you. insights were very important for, for all of us because we learned again a lot.